It's a very serious issue and a very detailed of a topic. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man allaqa, that whoever places around his neck tamimatan, an amulet in his, on his chest around his neck, faqad ashrak, then he has committed partners with Allah. La ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah. Inna alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإذن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وبعد My brothers and sisters in Islam Our deen, our religion It's a complete way of life And it directs us with our purpose of worship And it makes sure of the fact that Every act of life that which we carry out and say it is only for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and it is dedicated to Him. Some of the concepts of Islam and the fundamentals in its understanding of it we find in today's time and era that they are not well grounded within amongst the Muslims as well as we see the fact that with regards to actions and obedience towards it it's, there are a lot of shortcomings within it. And one of the most basic reasons for this is the fact that there is a lack of understanding, lack of knowledge of the deen of Allah, the religion of Allah. There are some things that we need to be well grounded in and without it there is no success. And there are other things that we need to be aware of so we could keep away from it so that we could save ourselves from destruction and distortion. One of the most fundamental aspects of our deen, and it's important for us to understand this so that we could base all of our deen upon it. And we understand the fact that when we dedicate and we submit and we place forward our actions and whatever we do of our intentions, whether it be the mind or thoughts or it be our sayings, whatever it be, they be dedicated for Allah Azza wa Jal completely. This aspect of the deen is considered and known to be as at tawheed monotheism, oneness of Allah. And the opposite of tawheed is shirk. It is to associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. Now we might think and say to ourselves, this is a very simple understanding and we have a grasp of it. But sometimes when we study the depth of this particular knowledge, we find the fact that there may be a lot of Muslims, a lot of individuals because of the uh, society that we are staying in in today's society which is a secular society. We are, uh, we are in trial and we are also in a type of uh, fitna, or a, a type of um, test that we, we are going through with regards, to our under, uh, with regards to our deen and so forth. But when it comes to Tawheed, when it comes to Shirk, there are particular things that we need to understand with regards to it. First and foremost, that when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal is one, what we mean by that is the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal 
in his rububiyya, in his lordship, in his uluhiyya, in his worship, in his asma wa sifat, in his names and attributes is one. What do we mean? When we say Allah is the Lord of everything, He is the one to sustain, He is the one to provide, He is the one to create, He is the one to, to innovate. Allah Azza wa Jal is the Lord of everything. When we move on to the aspect of Uluhiyya, we understand the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal, oneness of Allah in his worship in every aspect. When you make dua, you only make it to Allah. When you make a, a supplication, you, you do it to Allah. When you pray your salah, your five daily prayers, you do it for the sake of Allah. And the likes of any type of worship that is carried out, it's important the fact that we dedicate it only to Allah Azza wa Jal. Then Allah Azza wa Jal has names and attributes. The likes of Al Alim, the one who has absolute knowledge of everything. And we know the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal is absolute in his knowledge. We cannot give that particular attribute or name to any individual other than Allah. Now, if we contradicted this, if we went against this particular concept, and we said, for example, there is a khaliq like Allah khaliq, then we commit shirk with Allah. We've associated a partner or someone like to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is a grave sin. This is the most destructive sin in your life that you could carry out. In the same sense, when it comes to your worship, if, for example, the bowing is an act of worship, the prostration is an act of worship. To give sadaqah is an act of worship. To give charity is an act of worship. Now, if someone takes any particular act of worship and does it for other than Allah, or he does that particular act of worship for something or someone other than Allah, then he has committed the most grievous of sin. And that is, he has associated in worship with Allah something else or someone else. And this is the most gravest of sin anyone can carry out. Again, if we go on to the third aspect of it, where we say there are the names of Allah and there are the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, and we gave the example of Al Alim, that Allah Azza wa Jal has the absolute knowledge of the unseen and the seen and that which we cannot comprehend. But then, if we said, billah, that there is an individual who has a knowledge of the unseen, or he has absolute knowledge of everything, then we have equaled him in partners with Allah Azza wa Jal in that particular aspect. And this is shirk billah. And this is the most gravest of sin with Allah Azza wa Jal one can commit. This is a general understanding and I hope that the brothers and sisters will follow me through it. I want you to understand with the examples that I will give the how grave and how seriously Allah Azza wa Jal takes this particular sin. A tamima. It's an amulet. Tamima. It's an amulet that people hang around their necks why do they hang it? They hang it around their necks for the sake of the fact that this particular amulet may have written with inside it the Quran. It has the verses of Allah. Why do you wear it? We wear it because we have this particular understanding that there are forces of the unseen, the likes of the jinn that might attack this or possess this person and we want to be protected from that. There might be of the evil eye that might fall upon me and cause me trouble, hence I want protection from that. There are people who are jealous of me and want to take things away from me. 
Okay, and so I want protection from that. And a lot of the Muslims actually wear them around their neck. What does it have inside it? The Quran. Now the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the reason I'm giving you this example is for you to understand the severity of shirk, the severity of joining partners with Allah and how detailed of an issue this particular topic is. It's a very serious issue and a very detailed of a topic. And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man allaqa, that whoever places around his neck tamimatan, an amulet in his, on his chest around his neck, faqad ashrak, then he has committed partners with Allah. He has committed shirk with Allah. How? How? How detailed of a this, is this particular point? The issue is, it's not the Quran that was placed inside the amulet. The issue isn't, the problem isn't with the thread. The problem isn't with the pocket that the Quran is placed within. The problem is the belief of the individual and the lack of iman or the faith that is stripped away from him because of wearing that particular amulet. What is it? What is that belief? What's stripped away from it? Understand the sensitivity of the issue. Why did the Prophet وسلم, say that he has committed shirk? He's gone against a monotheistic you know, principle of our deen. Why? Because the person's senses, his heart and his mind, have moved away from the absolute reliance upon Allah, where he had this absolute reliance upon Allah, what he's done is he's removed it away from there and taken part of it away from it, a sense of it away from it, and he's placed it into the amulet that if I wear this, I will be better. Even although he says that Allah is the absolute one, but when he wears it, he has stripped away from that that creed, that iman, that faith, he stripped away from it, this blessing of complete reliance. Because of that, and the sensitivity of this particular issue, the Prophet ﷺ said that he has committed shirk with Allah. Because now he, when he goes out, he is more confident, he is more assured that nothing will befall me of harm because I'm wearing this particular amulet. This is incorrect. Hence the sensitivity of Tawheed and Shirk to understand it, to study it, it's upon every Muslim to make sure of it because Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَن يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah, indeed, Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk and he will forgive any other sin committed by individuals for whomever he wants. The severity of shirk is something that we need to comprehend and study so that we do not fall into this. For example, give you another example. Allah Azza wa Jal, we find that when we want to make dua, sometimes we go to individuals that are pious, that have passed away. That have passed away from our generations and they have gone back to Allah Azza wa Jal and they were individuals that were saints, they were pious people, they were righteous people. They go up to them and we find this in our culture. They would go up to these blessed graves and they would raise their hands. Through you, we intercede that let us be in a certain place or my such and such problem be uh, 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 moved away from me by the permission of Allah. So what have we done? We have placed this individual between ourselves and Allah and we've made dua through this person to Allah. Or sometimes what we do is that we call upon individuals that have passed away for help 
And we don't realize that what we're doing and what we're saying. We just think the fact that, for example, we're in a struggle, and some people, you might have even heard them say, for example, oh, yeah, Hussein, help me. The stuff like this, or yeah, Ali, help me. Amongst the tongues of the Muslims, and this is very dangerous. This is very sensitive. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Do you worship uh, besides Allah another مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ That which cannot harm you وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ And it cannot benefit them وَيَقُولُونَ هَؤُلَاءِ شُفَعَاؤُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And they say they are the ones to intercede on our behalf to Allah. But what does Allah say? In the beginning of the ayah, he says, are you worshipping these individuals besides Allah? And they cannot benefit you and they cannot harm you. And you consider them to be interceders between yourself and Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal, he warns them. He says, beware, be warned. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the most exalted and do not associate partners with him. Now we move on to another aspect and the third example. Allah Azza wa Jal, to him belongs all respect and absolute respect. When we swear by something, you cannot swear by something except the fact that it's extremely powerful and almighty. And in the deen of Allah, when we swear by something that which is of an important matter, we only swear by Allah. But then again, there are individuals amongst our community that you would find. That you would find them, the fact that they would swear by other than Allah. For example, they would say, I swear by my mother. I swear by the Prophet. I swear by this earth. I swear by this grave. I tell you, I'm telling the truth. You find this sort of attitude and these sort of words coming out from the mouth of Muslims and they don't understand the severity of it. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man halafa bi ghayri Allah, faqad ashrak. That whoever swears by someone other than Allah, then he has committed shirk with Allah. Why? Why? Because when we swear by something, it has to be azim, it has to be great in nature. It has to be extremely great in nature. And no one deserves that extreme respect in nature other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the swearing of something is extreme. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ala inna Allah yanhaakum an tahlifu. And indeed Allah Azza wa Jal, he prohibits you the fact that you swear by your fathers or anything other than that of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you swear, then swear by Allah or stay quiet. Another example. And the reason we give these examples is for the brothers and sisters to understand what we mean by tawheed and shirk whenever we speak about it. Whenever we speak about it. Sometimes our ulama, mashayikh, they say tawheed, they say shirk, they say tawheed. Sometimes we do not understand these terminologies. Arrafin, going to a fortune teller. Why are we going to a fortune teller? We find amongst the Muslims the fact that they also approach fortune tellers. Why? Because they are curious. It's curiosity. Curious to know what my future holds. They're curious to know what my future holds. But here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ata'arrafan, that whoever comes to a fortune teller, فَسَأَلَهُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ And he asks him of something لَمْ يُقْبَلْ لَهُ صَلَاةٌ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلًا 
Allah will not accept from him his salah for 40 nights and other ahadith that he has committed with, with Allah shirk. Why? Why is this a problem? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, he is alimul ghaybi wa shahada. Allah has the absolute knowledge of the unseen and the seen. Whether it be of the past or the future, it's Allah who has a complete and absolute knowledge. But when you go to someone and you ask him of, his, of your own future, does he have that knowledge of the future or not? By you trusting him and getting off the information of him, you are indirectly accepting the fact that he does. And because you did that, what you've done is you've taken away from Allah his absolute knowledge of the ghaib and shahada, of the unseen and the seen, and you've given it to an individual who claims, and under your curiosity, you go and give away your deen because of it. And this is a very dangerous matter. Now, we move on to a particular issue where Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ that indeed whoever associates partners with Allah. And we explained how one can associate partners with Allah, whether it be through his lordship, meaning Allah Azza wa is the lord of everything, whether it be through his worship, whether it be through his names and attributes, that whoever commits shirk with Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah Azza wa Jal has made upon him haram jannah, the abodes of paradise, النار, and his abode is in the hellfire. And these transgressors, Allah will have them no victory. Or Allah will give them no victory. One of the other problems with shirk and why it's dangerous, Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And if they were to commit shirk with Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will destroy every action that they did and cause it to become dust. Because with Allah there is no one. Allah Azza wa Jal is alone in his power and is absolute in his knowledge in every aspect. Now we move on to a particular point. We have reached the month of December and we find the fact that in our society that in this particular month we have the birth of Isa alayhi salam or Jesus Christ and Christ in the Arabic language it means Masih so Masihu Masih ibn Maryam we have the fact that Jesus Christ was born on this particular day as Muslims we are coexistence meaning we live amongst other societies in tranquility and peace. As Muslims, we are tolerant of other beliefs and other ideas as well as other faiths. It's part of being a Muslim to be tolerant. Living in societies, we would find the fact that Muslims, when they go into other parts of the world, that they would sometimes find contradiction with their own religion with regards to their fundamental beliefs. What can we and what can we not do? Because where we understand the severity of associating partners with Allah, and we're talking about putting out an amulet around your neck, and the Prophet ﷺ says that he's committed shirk. And what if somebody in greeting does say, for example, Merry Christmas, then we are accepting the fact that in, 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 with regards to the Christian religion, with regards to Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ coming down as a son of God. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in the Quran, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, O Muhammad, that Allah Azza wa Jal is one and alone. Allah Hussamad, that Allah Azza wa Jal is absolute and pure. And from him came from no one, and Allah came from no one. 
and there is no one like Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is alone in his likeness. And he is the way it suits his majesty. So with regards to this particular point, and understanding the severity of shirk, one of the things that the Muslims should be aware of is indulging in things that would contradict with their own belief. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَالْيَدِينُ they have their religion and they act upon that and you have your religion and let you act upon your own religion. But sometimes to be coexistent and to be tolerable, it does not mean for a person to give up his religion and to give up his fundamentals of Tawheed for them to accept other people. This is not what tolerance means. Tolerance means the fact that the people have their belief and they have their ideas and they have their aqidah and they have their faith, they have their religion, whether he's a Buddhist, whether he's a Hindu, whether he's a Christian, whether, he, whether he's a Jewish person, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We are tolerable towards every individual within inside the society. But at the same time, when it comes to our deen, we do not mix in within our deen, in our iman, in our faith. We do not mix the likes of shirk into our and accept it. Indirectly or directly. And this is something, for example, people tend to express tolerance through, for example, placing up a Christmas tree. Even although this is a Christian holy day. But the Muslims would do it. But they do not understand how it contradicts with their own principle of belief. And this is dangerous. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, That if they were to associate partners with Allah in any particular point, that Allah will destroy all of their actions whatever they've done. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is alone and absolute in every aspect. So this is a particular point. Again, to wish somebody a blessed day that I wish you a blessed day or to wish them, you know, a, a blessed festival. This is something fine. This is okay to do. And it's fine to help someone, for example, in, in, their, in their everyday life, in, in their everyday aspect. It's good, whether he be Christian or he be Jewish or whatever the religion the individual be. But when it comes to Tawheed and when it comes to Shirk, it's very important the fact that we draw a line and understand that when it comes to our belief, we do not do anything that contradicts it. We do not say anything that which contradicts it. And I ask Allah to keep us upon guidance and pure from shirk. And I ask Allah to keep us upon tawheed and the oneness of Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa jazakallahu khairan. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله ما لنا رب سوى لا إله